Welcome to Citizen at the Alpha 3.12. Not only the menu or even the loading screen is different, no, there were some innovations and the 3.12 is full of features. But let's start with the little things. You can switch the ship entry labels in the menu on and off, so Star Citizen shows you where the entrances of the respective ships are located. And the very bottom, another important feature, especially when you are changing ships, you sometimes have the feeling that you can't get out of the seat of your ship. Use this option if you say you want to get out directly, otherwise you have to hold the Z key a bit longer. But also optically a lot has changed. As we can see here the nebula have come into play and look really atmospheric and evocative. You can find them in almost every area where there are asteroids or the corresponding stations. They are also found in different colors from green to dark blue, we see a lot of variations. And also the new refinery stations are really optical clearly visible. They extend over several kilometers and exchange the game again in any case. And unlike the cargo decks that came into play with 3.11, the refinery decks are not only optical accessory, but will be explained in more detail later. A real gameplay extension is the new tractor beam. The first beam start in the game as a player tractor beam. That means for the multi-tool and attachment which with you can lift and move items that don't exceed the weight limit. So you don't have to carry heavy crates anymore, for example, but can move them with the beam. With the mouse wheel you can adjust how far or how close the whole thing should be to you and of course you can also do all kinds of mischief with it. And since this feature is still brand new there are still some bugs with it. For example if we lose a crate or an item it will be back where we originally picked it up and not where it should be. This calculation is still a bit buggy but the feature is really brand new and works quite well. But of course you can also use the track the beam in a meaningful way. Mainly for missions that take places in weightlessness. In general, once you are in weightlessness, you can pull yourself to other fixed points or heavier objects. However, there are still some restrictions. For example, you can't pull yourself along other players or pick them up and pull them to you. That means living players are not a target for you. For the tractor beam, however, every fixed point is an anchor, so to speak. And we can move much faster with the tractor beam in weightlessness than with the EVA suit. But the first through that probably everyone has once they have seen the tractor beam is how does it look like I can use it a kind of skateboard for my ship to hold on to it and let myself be pulled along? And the simple answer to that is yes! The whole thing works relatively unurgently and well. However, it has a limitation in terms of speed. You shouldn't get your ship over 8 or 9 meters per second, because otherwise the power and the attraction of the tractor beam wouldn't be enough. We tested the whole thing by putting our ship in decoupled mode, setting it to a speed of 8 and then turning off the engines. Otherwise it didn't work, but with this approach it was relatively easy and it worked because our ship kept on flying at the same speed. And so you have the possibility to hold on to a flying ship and let it pull you along. The speed is of course a small drawback because most ships are much faster. But for a few trips in weightlessness it is definitely suitable. And fun is definitely trying it out. But there's also a little warning. If you withdraw from the ship, that is from weightlessness to weight and use the maximum speed of your tractor beam, that is, if you hit a stationary object, it is quite possible that you get stuck somewhere and suffer an unsightly death. With a little practice, however, boarding a ship works even without the famous Star Citizen role in the impact. And we don't have to worry about the absolute power supply either. The whole thing still works with an infinite battery, just like in mining. And so we have the possibility to stay on our ship for a long time without power outages. In any case, a really good feature, which acts a perfect preparation for the ship's tractor beam. But where to get the tool? On every planet where you can get the normal mining tool, this is also relatively cheap, meaning that for a little more than 300 UAC, we can get the attachment directly for sale. 
320 USC for so much fun is definitely a bargain. And if we're shopping anyway, we'll see what the 3.12 has to offer. On your deal we can buy the Origin 100 series for example. This is the mirror that comes with the last version and it's relatively cheap. With 650,000 of almost 800,000 for the Combat version. But we haven't found the 135C as a freighter. But that's not all we can buy here in the 3.12. New the refinery decks, that means over the inner station transit line we get the elevators on the refinery decks. And by the way, the elevator panels have been redesigned to cover the whole area and look more tidy and comfortable. Not only do they show us where we have to go, but also where we are currently located. As far as the look of the new decks is concerned, it's really overwhelming. The whole thing really reminds you of an industry plant and which blast furnaces and molten metal. The soundscape for this is really atmospheric and evocative and definitely worth a visit. Even if you are maybe not the miner or industrial. But as mentioned before, the refinery decks are not just placeholders like the cargo decks, but in the service area we also find a store for example. And this store is definitely one of the recommendations for the 3.12. Not only do we get everything about mining equipment here, but also mining lasers. And the crux of the matter is, the whole thing is about half the price of what we buy on the planet. A Pembroke armor for 5000 USC or a Mac flag for half? It's definitely worth a trip and I would recommend everyone to buy it on the refinery decks. Here we get a complete mining equipment, no matter if for the rock or for the prospector and don't have to travel anywhere else. So the times are over where we had to fly from one station to the other to get a suit or a laser. Because the best offer is still to come, namely the Helix mining laser which normally costs 100,000 USC. You can get it here for a little more than 50,000, so it's really a considerable saving. We also find all mining consumables here and there are also some ships to rent. The rock is unbeatable cheap for about 4,000 USC per day, or the prospector with 43,000 USC. In addition, the Cutlass Black is transporter for the rock. What more could you want? So we can start a complete mining excursion. But under refinement processing, we also have the possibility to sell our mined material directly as usual or to get in touch with the new refinery system. And this new refinery system definitely has it all. Not only it is really complex and deep, but the materials we can process vary from station to station. That means we have to find the right station for the right material where we can get the most bonuses. And how the whole thing looks like in principle we will of course test immediately. Because this is where the new mining UI comes into play. Not only for the rock but also for the prospector and Argo mole. Here we see on the left side the energy from our mining laser and on the right side how much energy arrives in the stone. Here we have the area that we have to hit highlighted in green and as soon as we give too much energy we get the red area and overload. The new mining UI is definitely very well done and really very clear. But if you have orientated yourself on percentages and numbers as before, you will have to do some conversion work here first. Almost all elements are graphically structured and much clearer. After a few minutes, however, you have already gotten used to it and don't want to go back to the old system. And with the new mining system, and with the refinery system for refining the materials, it will be more important to use the prospector or the Argo mole. In the beginning it will mainly be about finding out the finest points of the refinery system and then using them in the best possible way. Because here it may well be that we collect and process materials that we might have left out before. Because we have a refinery station where we can get bonuses on these materials and then make a relatively good profit. And as far as these systems has been more or less figured out and we can say for sure what is worthwhile, how it is worthwhile and what you have to do for it, there is of course a mining guide or a mining update here in the channel. Because not only the refinery system is new but also the mining UI and in my experience of the 3.12 the mining guide has been some changes in the composition of the stones. For example, I found some finished materials that are already refined and some raw materials that are still to be refined. All in all a relatively comprehensive system which takes time to really understand it and to bring it closer to you. 
And if you are interested in participating in such a process yourself, that means to get to know new game mechanics, to break them down into their components and to get the best for you, then have a look at Discord. Here you will find a community and can always do what you want to do and maybe find someone else who wants the same. The new mining system has its dark sides too. We have contrast problems with relatively bright planets, which means we can see the mining UI very well and there is still some work to, to be done. However, it's a significant improvement over before. And when you're done with the mining, you can sell it as before on the trading console, which is now available on every station like here, with a, I admit, bad load or use the refinery system. And for the new refinery system, there are several factors. We can see in the upper left corner which materials bring bonuses or disadvantages on this station. If we choose our prospector, we don't have any materials that bring bonuses or disadvantages on this station. With the thrust control, we can choose which materials we want have refined here. And also with the process of the refinements, we have a selection possibility. To what extent these processes affect which materials differently will also still be to be found out exactly. The time which is concerned with its different and depending upon how much material and which with process we let it refine, we have a different time beginning. And also the costs which we must spend for it for this is differ. We simply select the standard and all the materials we have in our hold for testing. We see a time indication of how long it will take. Also on the left we have a percentage indication of how busy the station is and the higher the load, the higher the price and the longer the time it takes. Here the load is relatively low and we only have a time for about 39 minutes. But note, 39 minutes for a single load of a prospector with relatively bad material. Also we can choose in which ship the whole thing should be taken and for this we need a ship with cargo capacity. That means the trade and also the transport of goods is one of the main pillars that come back into play with the refinery systems. After the end of the waiting period, we get a display on the same console that the work order has been completed by us and we can pick up our material. Here we see a summary again and also which ship we will be able to take the cargo. 693 SSU, that means there are about 7 normal SU cargo and we can get them into a Titan Avenger. And for comparison a prospector has 32 SU cargo capacity, which like him has brought some inert materials. But the output of the refinery is in any case less than what we have delivered. And of course, it would be possible to provide a ship of a somewhat larger category with the corresponding cargo space here as cargo hold and to continue mining until this ship is completely filled. To what extent it is possible to load this into a ship from a team member is not yet apparent, but in our case we were traveling as a team, there was also no possibility to select the ship of a team member. Therefore, I assume that initially only own ships can be loaded. We have loaded our Titan Avenger and see then also our materials sorted neatly. A small jump further to one of the capitals for sale and here we also come to innovation. Namely, we are on Hurston and the big innovation is that the landing corridors are not longer available. We can again land normally without landing corridors and also without intervention of an autopilot, as long as we are in the rough area of the airport. Here we have a small time bonus again and the whole thing is easier to handle and the immersion is of course even higher than we get goody objects and landing objects. And in general, the landing on the planets has been improved. Just before we reach our landing point, the landing gates open. We were reflexively getting a new landing request, but it was necessary. The whole thing is definitely more comfortable and fun. The immersion increases and we have again the pleasure to land on the main planet and to trade here. However, the obligatory train ride through the beautiful Hurston remains of course for us. When we sold our cargo, we had the first small disillusionment. Because 
all the effort from the dismantling, the transport to the station, the refinery, the time we need for that and finally the transport to sail, we made in our case nearly 1000 USC of profit. That means if we had sold the whole thing directly it would have been nearly 3000 USC and so it was now nearly 4000 USC. That was definitely a grip in the toilet. It's a German saying by the way. But in principle the refinery system works, also the trade with the corresponding goods which come out of it works and if we approach this correctly, I am firmly convinced that one or the other really good profit can also be made. We remain in any case on the ball and it look very nevertheless interesting all through proof found systems closer. But of course, these were not all the new features that came into play with 3.12. The times for repeating, uh, claiming for example destroyed chips have also been significantly increased. And also the cost that we have to pay here should we want to speed things up, 30 minutes for a prospector. And if we want to have it faster we will pay 3000 UEC compared to the few UEC we had to pay before. The whole thing increases exponentially to bigger ships, up to a Carrick. Here we pay over 20,000 UEC and had to wait really long for it. The Cutlass Red already takes half an hour and as said the Carrick is not available just like that anymore. 3 hours 30 minutes and the time we need here even if we accelerate is about half an hour. And so the value of the ships and also the possible destruction is another one. And we have to take more care of our things. A good step in the right direction in my opinion. But also the mission system has been expanded. Here for example we have the first missions for the Bounty Hunter Guild. Here we also have to pay for the first acceptance as such a mission, 1000 UEC up to 500 UEC. For this there is of course a dedicated guide because the mission design and the new missions are promising in any case. We will have a closer look at this again. And finally we take a very close look at the brand new station, the INS Jericho. This is located in the MIG L1 range. The microtech area and it is relatively difficult to reach. However, with the right coordinate it is possible. And the coordinates are from MIG L1 2272 km distance, from microtech 4.363 million km distance to Delamore 34.288 million km and to Hurston 43.253 million kilometers. You can find the station here in one of the new nebulas. This one is a bit darker, appears greenish black. The station itself is a military station and definitely worth a look. And since I don't want to spoil anything, here is just a little information. There was already a report about a Xeno threat which means about alien threatening the system and that should be in the area of this station. That means that we can expect a small in-game event or a new game mechanic soon. The stations are very different from all the other stations. It looks like a relatively large, long ship when you fly by for the first time. And has relatively many accesses. That means there are several landing pads and also several docks to explore. Definitely worth a trip and I recommend you to stop by. Also the armament and defense of the station is extraordinary. With relatively many big cannons in my estimate at least level 7 or 8, above and below the station has much more firepower than the stations we know otherwise. But the size is small which means that every station on one of the moons or even in a current nebula is much bigger than this military station. But there are two big docking places for capital ships. And here is a lot of room for speculations what will happen here in the near future. But the station didn't come into play just like that. If you are wondering what's inside, the interior is still empty. Our Explorer Pro Horistas make black managed to get inside and have a look around. However, there were no textures and interior life, the whole thing is still an empty shell. And each of the four entrances areas accessible at the front sides 
we already find an NPC and some place her little consoles. These have no functionality yet, but we can get into the interior to some extent. For a trip or the one or other race, the stations are definitely a good choice. And of course, there is a lot more content for version 3.12, but these were the most important ones. I hope you liked the video and you leave me a like and a subscribe. If you have any hints or comments what you might want to see in a video or which new content we should take a closer look at, then write it to me in the comments below. We already had a lot of fun with a relatively stable and good version 3.12. I hope it will be released on the live server for the next days and then it will be playable for everyone. With the 3.12 a lot of new content comes into play. It already plays very well and offers the game even more depth. It's a combination of mining, refining, then also picking up with the merchant ship until the sale offers in any case even more depth and extends the gameplay mechanics. The tractor beam is already well usable as a small version and I'm really looking forward to see it in a bigger version on the ships. In my opinion, Star Citizen is on a good way this year. That means 2020 after all. And hasn't this Hamish but rather increased? Of course, the box and mistakes are still there, but so far it has improved for my part. And of course, there is also a current giveaway, a Nomad with lifetime insurance presented by Starhanger. Your safe marketplace, where you can buy any ship all year round. And the most important at the end, a big thank you to all Patreons and channel members. Without you, this would not not be possible in this form and I just want to thank you. You guys rock! I will say goodbye until the next stream, these are Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday from 7 to 10 pm German time and as always, I will say goodbye and see you in the verse!